Welcome back to another episode of Games and Giggles with Gabby and me, Denise. Uh, we're very happy to be back. Um, in this episode, uh, we talk about... What did we talk about? Um, I scary completely... things? Hmm? <laughs> scary games, yes. We talk about scary games, yeah. what makes things scary, um, what triggers us and what triggers us less. Um, and then we talk about very emotional games um, like Spirit Fairer and that it's sometimes very good to have a cry. And in the second half of the episode, we talk about mental health struggles. So trigger warning, uh, if, if you can't deal with that, talking about mental health issues. Um, we don't talk about anything too graphic, but just be careful, be warned. But also, um, I hope it will be informative for anyone who needs it and those who don't need it as well. Have fun with the episode. We are back again. I'm so happy to be doing this, Denise. Yes, yeah, same. <laughs> Hi. Hello, everyone. So, um, well, we'll start with sort of how we've been lately. We have been, guys, by the way, before we even get started, we have been very brave with Denise. We played Phasmophobia yesterday for the first time. Yes. So, oh that God, was wait. something. Can I just tell you something as well, right? So yeah. after we finished playing Phasmophobia, like I was okay in the night, you know, I, I could sleep mm -hmm. and there were no problems there. But after playing, so I went to the bathroom downstairs mm -hmm. and, um, you know, like everyone's sleeping in the house basically. So I was like, oh, I don't want to turn like any of the big like lights mm -hmm. on, the, the mm -hmm. ceiling lights. I'll just use my phone flashlight to go downstairs. You can see where this is going, okay? So <laughs> I'm like walking down the stairs in the dark with just my phone flashlight on, uh, going to the bathroom. I was terrified. I was like, this is literally just like the game right now. Like I'm just with my flashlight. And I'm like, I went downstairs and you know when you do that stupid thing, like just flashing a corner quickly in case someone's there, you know? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> I got to the toilet, okay? I got to it safely, that wasn't a problem, but it was just that journey. And Damn, then on the way yeah. back, I was like freaking sprinting up the <laughs> stairs. I was like, no demon is gonna get me today, you know? <laughs> oh my god, I can imagine that, oh. yes. So um, it was, yeah, it was interesting. I also had it a little bit. So Okay, okay. As I told you yesterday, I have a history of not being able to sleep well after horror. Because things just stick with me things just stick in my brain yeah same. and um so i was very worried that that's gonna happen because i got properly scared during the game obviously yeah. i know i don't have to be scared and i watch a lot of videos on it so i know what happens and i know what to expect so i thought it was i was gonna be fine but there were some moments i got so scared so i felt I was a bit worried that this is going to affect me and it's going to stay with me. Yeah. And I'll, I, I'll be really scared and won't be able to sleep. Yeah. So when I went to brush my teeth and everything, everyone in the flat was already asleep. <laughs> um, but I wasn't that scared. Okay. Okay. It was fine. And also the thing is, I think with houses, if there's so like houses are always a bit creepy, right? There's mm. always some noise somewhere. Yeah. And if you have something to blame that noise on, it's fine. Yeah. So in my parents' house, it was the cat. So that was a really old house. I wouldn't be surprised if it was haunted a little bit. Um, I had some weird incidences. Like, yeah, but th that's beside the point. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. could be haunted. That's all I'm saying. Uh -huh. uh, but we have a cat there. So whenever you hear something weird, you just think it's the cat. Simple as that. Yeah, so you put some sort of logic, I guess, mm -hmm. behind Yeah, Exactly. Behind and it. in this flat, my upstairs na stairs neighbors, uh, they work a lot during the night and they have a little dog. So I can hear them walking around a lot and I can hear the dog running yeah. around a lot. You know the typical noise of yeah. when a dog runs and their claws hit the ground? Yeah. <laughs> and it's like... <laughs> Uh, I hear that a lot. So okay. any weird noise that is around, I can just blame on upstairs. So mm -hmm. even if I hear weird things, it'll just be like, oh, well, upstairs it's the neighbors. Dog. Yeah, it's the, <laughs> yeah dog. it's the dog. Oh, yeah. So I think that's really, really calming. Yeah. But if you're like in a house that you don't know well, if you're staying over at friends or something True. and you hear noises and you don't know what it is, it could be the neighbors, it could be an 
animal somewhere, but you don't know. It could、you、be a ghost. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so true. I also remember once、um, I was texting you because I kept hearing noises and I knew nobody was home. And like here, you can hear the neighbors, but now I'm used to like the like again the sounds that the neighbors、mm-hmm. make, right? You know, like oh, that's the neighbors, you know, going up the stairs or something. But this w- sound was like right outside my door, so I was like freaking out, and I was like texting Denise, like, oh my god, there's basically someone <laughs> outside my door, you know, like all these thoughts going through、mm-hmm. my head. But one of the best things you told me, you were like, oh well, I also lived in a house with like old maybe like wooden floors and stuff, and like wood makes sounds, right, or something. That- Like、that, and that thing has stuck with me. So now, whenever I hear like weird sounds coming from outside the door, I'm like, oh yeah, it's just it's just the wood, you know, it's just the floors.、Yeah. <laughs> Especially like wood changes a lot with I think、um, the humidity in the air with、yeah. uh, with temperature. My dad, because he works with wood, he's always like, yeah, wood is alive, and that's why、yeah. he loves it so much. And that's the thing, like. Wood creaks, and the older, the more it creaks. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, and so that, also in our old house, that yeah, stuck with me. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> and also, the thing is, that's why I like having cats in the house because weird noises. It's just a cat. It's just a cat.、Mm-hmm. I do Ex- miss having a cat in the house. Yeah, it's、sure. it's just calming, and I also feel like, I feel like. Cats are demon fighters, if that makes sense. I don't know. That's just like something I have in my head. Okay, so if there was more, yeah. <laughs> no, I just think that, like, you know how cats sometimes stare into corners or、yeah. places in the wall, and you're like, what do they see there? And I don't know. It could be something. Maybe they're just listening and staring into emptiness, or maybe they see like a tiny bug or something that we、yeah. don't notice. But for me. I I don't really truly believe in the supernatural. I'm very skeptic, but I can't say that I completely that I do not like. I can't say that I do not believe it, but I also don't believe it fully. If that makes sense, I'm just open to the possibility, but I'm tending towards no. Yeah, no, that's so, fair. So, but、yeah. if there's supernatural things, then cats can see them. Like that's something I'm convinced. If there's something supernatural, cats can see it. I believe And, that. So for me, cats can fight it. So in my head, somehow cats are demon fighters. If that makes sense. That's so cool, though. <laughs> right. Like, so what pet like... do you have? Oh, just you know, just a demon fighter. <laughs> <laughs>、oh, um, it seems really strange. I just feel like if there was a ghost in the house, the cat would react to it, and yeah, she、fair. would probably attack it. That's fair. I honestly, I read somewhere, but I mean, I don't know where I read this. Right? Could be just some weird website. But I swear they said that cats like can see ghosts, and that's why when, like when you said like oh they stare into space like they're just seeing a ghost or something. So、mm-hmm. I I believe that I think that so- they're seeing something that we're not seeing. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's、um, something there for sure.、Mm-hmm. No, I believe that too. Yeah. I mean, whatever it is, it could also、whatever、be like air currents or I don't know dust or whatever. Yeah. Oh well,、yeah. we'll see. But I love that demon fighter cats. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't even think like they're like fighting it like it's their mission. I just think no, they no, fight it just, like yeah, no, like another cat. Like if there's another cat yeah, in the yeah, house yeah. that they don't、yeah. like, they will attack it. So、yeah. I think it will be the same with with ghosts. Because the cats are so chill. You know, they would never be like very actively fighting. These things,、no. they'll just indeed have like a stare down. I'm just imagining a stare down between the cat. Like cat would be like. Fuck off, my house! I'm the only one zooming around here at two、yeah. o'clock in the night. There's not enough space for the two of us in here, buddy.、Mm. Get out! <laughs> oh man! But yeah, anyway. So going back to the game, how did you find it?、Um, it was your first、it's... time playing, right? Yes, I watch a lot. At, at the beginning, I was like, "Oh, what's that? I'm not that interested. Horror,、mm, that's not mine." But then I watch a lot of YouTubers play it, and I think、yeah. it's very entertaining to watch.、Yeah. <laughs> so、For、I was、sure. like, "Okay, could be fun." And what I really like about the game is that、um, you're not like hunting the ghost; you're just investigating the ghost. If that makes sense. Yeah. And I think it's a really cool concept with like trying out different things and then 
Um, so basically you have to go into a house and figure out what kind of ghost lives in there. So you try different things like a spirit box, an EMF reader, um, a book that you write down that the, uh, put down that the ghost can write in it and things like that. And with that, you kind of eliminate different possibilities. And then you have to do, find three things that the ghost does. And with these three things, you can find out which ghost it is. And I really like that aspect of it. I like that it's not a ghost hunting story it's an investigation game kind of yeah exactly. which i enjoy yeah and there's like that that's i think also why there's a nice sort of um combination of it being sometimes a little bit scary but then most of the time indeed you're just investigating and you know thinking about things mm -hmm. right you're not just sort of you know running from a ghost constantly well, sometimes near the end, but <laughs> at the beginning, indeed, you just want to find out what ghost it is and like do all the objectives. So there's always something to do in the game, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I love this kind of planned approach of it, like this analytic approach that you go in with. And that makes, I think that makes it such a unique games because usually you go into a game and you fight something, right? Yeah. But this is not fighting. It's just analyzing. It's investigation investigating so i think that's really really cool yeah it is it is definitely a unique take on that kind of genre of game and i think mm -hmm. that's why like for someone like us we can still play it and have fun mm -hmm. um because it, it is that yeah like as you said analytical thinking and you know you gotta strategize what you're doing mm -hmm. and so it, it can be for more people than just you know people who want because I don't think it's a re... I, it is scary to, like, to me and probably to you as well mm -hmm. sometimes. But I don't think, like, it's genuinely really scary, right? It's not... For me, at least, it's not the most scary, like, thing I've ever seen, you know? The thing is, I thought it wasn't going to be scary for me either. Uh, but there were some moments where I was really, like, properly full-on scared. Like there was, was was that when um so maybe we can like say something about because was it mm -hmm. it was in the last game right when... the last game was the worst yeah there was a moment before in another game okay but in the last game it was the worst so basically um I was standing around we had an idea where the ghost was and I was standing around there doing some stuff and then I hear heard the noise that it makes like this uh, uh, kind of noise yeah, yeah that was good that was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I was like oh shit it's here and at that moment I wasn't scared but then I turned around and yeah. it was just standing there and the ghosts in there they sometimes flicker like they flicker in and out of existence basically so you see them that a second and then you don't see it but this yeah. one didn't even flicker it was just standing there, standing there and behind that you. like even even though I knew it heard it before and I kind of knew it was there it scared me so much yeah, I I, actually, I really felt like I was having a heart attack. I just oh I couldn't God. talk for a second. I remember I couldn't talk for a second. I just walked away from there and hid. Yeah, oh God. <laughs> yeah, I just terrible. hid, yeah. and it l really took me a second to recover. Like that moment scared the shit out of me. Yeah, because I think but, we were all mm. like struggling a little bit, especially with this one, because it was like the the hardest ghost we definitely had that night and um it was a demon right in the end we mm -hmm. figured out so there's like different ghost types this one was a demon which is one of the harder ones you know to deal with and to mm -hmm. find out and also we got the location wrong at first so there's yes. like a lot of you know things going on in this game uh, it was the last one we were all a bit tired you know um and yeah so i think for everyone it was a bit tough but yeah for sure like i i saw her but i I can't remember, I think I do remember you being there, but I think I was trying to, like, do something. I can't remember, like, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, EMF, like, I was looking at other things. So I didn't see her pop up straight away, so I couldn't, like, warn you, like, oh, Denise, you know, there's, like, a ghost behind you. <laughs> so by that point, you've already, you've already seen her yeah. and stuff. And I just, I actually, I did freeze as well, but no, like, I did, I don't know if I was, like, really that scared, but it was a more, like, shock, you know, like, oh my god, mm -hmm. she's there. 
and indeed i remember her like just standing there like sometimes goes up here for like a second and then you're like oh yeah exactly yeah and you like scare and then you go again yeah she was just standing there she was just there so then i i kind of froze i was like okay is the game glitch like i almost thought like something's weird about this one Mm -hmm. um but then i got like a photo of it as well in the end but i think you already walked off by that point so the thing is like it was so... I find it so weird. So basically, I died... This was our last game of the night. Mm-hmm. And I died, I think, in two games before that. Mm-hmm. So I know the death scene. And I know the death scene from videos. And it's not that scary. I don't think the dying is that scary in that game. No. So usually that kind of calms you down, right? So yeah. as, as, as soon as you know, okay, you die, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Then you kind of can deal with it. But at that point, I couldn't deal with it anymore. I got so scared. And I remember we had to go back... I think to move the camera, yes, because we realized it, it was put in the wrong yeah, place. Yeah, in the wrong place. And I wanted to go in, but I was so scared. I couldn't. Like, I took a step inside and I was like, nope, I'm not doing this. And I turned back around. Yeah. I <laughs> and totally it's so get weird, that. right? Like, there's no, no there's literally no reason to be scared because the worst thing already had happened. I already died before. And then, um, the ghost already turned up and everything. I saw her already. We knew where she was. And I kind of knew how she w- was going to react. But at the same time, it was it was so scary. And I couldn't handle it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't think that's weird. You know, I think d- definitely it just... It's it's the sequence of a, of events in that case, right? So what actually happens. And indeed, mm-hmm. like, if, you know, a ghost is, like, literally just behind you. Like, of course, that would freak out loads of people. So I, I don't think that, oh, once you've seen it once, it, it won't, like, shock you anymore, you know? I think it definitely depends on the situation uh, that you're in. And, you're, like, you were so much braver than I, because I remember the first time I played it, and it was with uh, with Kito, so one of our friends. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. I was terrified, but I, like... Because... I don't know, like, we were playing with some random people as well, just online, you know, which who were mm-hmm. all really nice. Like, I have to say that community is lovely, you know, like, everyone we've played with is so kind and really chill. Um, but yeah, so I was, like, really new and, and Kito and this other girl that we were playing with, she, mm-hmm. she was also, like, I don't know, they were, like, level, you know, 60 or, you know, like, crazy levels. Um, but I was terrified and I remember, like, I just didn't... Like, I also just didn't say a lot, and I was, like, hiding in the closet most of the game. I was like, I hate this, like, put me out of here, you know? I just, oh, it's so intense at the start, and especially if you don't know. Like, I think once you know the game mechanics, like, what the Mm -hmm. ghosts will do when they chase you, where to hide, uh, and not to talk, you know, like, you know, all the little tips. I think Mm -hmm. it becomes easier because you know how the game works, but when you just start, and, like, I didn't know how the ghosts would work, so... I was just terrified, you know, you hear these sounds and oh, mm. it was just horrible. I was so, so scared at first. I know, but that's the thing, like, I knew how the game worked. I watched a lot of it, mm. but it was still scary yeah. nonetheless, yeah. Yeah. But Definitely. isn't it weird that, like, I was so scared yesterday, but I really want to play the game again. Yeah, but I think that... that... Denise, like for a lot of people, is the thrill, you know? Like I don't I, I don't get it usually either. I really don't. But with this game I, I can understand. Like you do feel a bit of a thrill because I feel like again it's in that controlled environment, right? You know mm-hmm. what's gonna happen. There's nothing that's gonna really jump out at you. So it's like a healthy amount of like let's say danger or or scary events you know it's like it's like that moderate amount isn't it that you can deal with i think but for a lot of people yeah absolutely like this that's why people love scary stuff right scary that's, movies that's really weird yeah. right yeah i i get it now i mean i still get it a little bit but i always i don't really watch horror movies no that's no. only I, I think i told you about this yesterday so uh, i had an experience where i watched a scary movie as a teenager and it scared the shit out of me. I couldn't properly fall asleep for months. Like, not like that I stayed awake for hours and hours, but I was scared in the dark falling asleep, which made it harder for me to fall asleep. And so, but for example, when I watch a horror movie like Alien, which I'm not sure how much it classifies as a horror movie, but Alien thrills me, but it doesn't scare me. Like when I turn the movie up, 
off, I don't get scared when I'm alone. Because I know it's an alien in outer space. And I am not in outer space. I won't be in outer space ever. I mean, I hope I will be someday, but probably not. So it's just far away enough for me that it doesn't scare me as a person. It just scares me within the movie. And that's why I'm so careful with horror games and horror movies. Because as soon as I can relate too much or feel like I could be in that situation, then it really gets to me. Yeah. That's so interesting, though. Because for me, I feel like it's the other way around. Like, the more realistic, sort of more like thriller type of movies or like really intense, like, that's okay for me. But if it's like really... um. I don't know, like maybe if it's really unrealistic, but it's shot in a way that is really gruesome or like terrifying, mm-hmm. I would still relate to that, even though I know that could probably oh, never happen. I would still be like, oh my god, that's just the most terrifying thing I've ever seen, you know? Like, I, re- I can't remember what movie I watched this all, but I was like really young, and I think my mom and I tried to watch a scary movie because she's also really scared of them. So for mm-hmm. us, this was like, oh my god, you know, <laughs> have the blankets ready, like we were those. <laughs> Aww. those people who like would pull mm-hmm. up the blanket if something scary would happen so we would just and my mom was like oh you look and i'm like no you look you know like, oh terrible. that's so cute <laughs> but i remember we did watch a, a scary movie i don't know what the name is anymore it was like a long time ago but um really unrealistic things happened you know like mm-hmm. really just just out of this world like as well like the world was some you know some other universe like mm-hmm. i don't even know but but I remember that movie really stuck with me. Like, I can still still picture some of the visuals from that movie because Damn, they were yeah. so unrealistic that it just, you know, I was like, oh, my God, like, that's so creepy because you never even Damn. think about those things until you okay. see them. Yeah, so I don't know. I feel like it could go both ways, but that's what terrifies me, like, the really unrealistic things. Um, that's interesting that's interesting yeah or like the last of us right like the Mm -hmm. zombies you know again like zombies have been around for ages but obviously i mean okay hey some people are like yeah zombies might come (laughs) one day you know we've got to be prepared (laughs) but like let's be honest like we don't have them right now right it's unrealistic Mm -hmm. but that game terrifies me i'm so scared of the zombies (laughs) i mean i am scared too like games it's different but again like i think for me being scared within a game mm. is scary and terrifying and I don't always want that but it won't stick with me after the game like it's not genuinely mm. scaring me as a person it's scaring me in the game yeah but I think that's that's what I'm just worried about of me suddenly like the, the film I watched as a teenager was the exorcism of Emily Rose and it's said to be based on a true story and um it's about demons and like literally the devil possessing her or something like that and for me at that point i think i haven't really decided yet if i believed in demons and god and all these things so for me at that point it seemed like a real possibility that i could get possessed and stalked by a demon yeah And I think that I remember one thing about that. They said that I think three o'clock at night is the devil's hour. And that's when the devil's strongest. And I remember that sometimes, as you do normally, you wake up sometime during the day. And if if I woke up somewhere close to three o'clock, I'd be so scared. You know, these kind of things, because I could relate them to my life. Like, I felt in actual danger when I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, that's horrible, yeah. Yeah. And obviously then, you're more likely to wake up at that time, because then, you know... I think so, yes. (laughs) I think, like, the brain is like, oh, it's 3 o'clock, we could be in danger, wake up, wake up. Exactly. And then you obviously got trouble falling asleep, and, Mm -hmm. oh, man. That's horrible, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's all. I don't want to think about that. Yeah, that's just... Yeah. But, yeah, I think, you know, I think in general it is knowing and you find those things out like sometimes indeed it can really affect you you know especially when you're a bit younger and you're still figuring Mm -hmm. out okay what's my sort of limit that I can take with these things so I think establishing that establishing a healthy limit for yourself like where we said now with phasmophobia it's fun it's a bit of a frill and when it gets to that stage where you're like okay this is too much like that I'm actually just scared just Mm -hmm. go off you know I think that's that's healthy like 
And I, I get that a lot of people, what I find as well when I play scarier games, and like I won't lie, I, I do get a thrill from it. Like I played The Last of Us and that was great, but I also did it because the story was great. I wouldn't play that mm -hmm. game if it was just zombies chasing me and... You know, the stream is like, yeah, do it. This is fun to watch because you're terrified. <laughs> it is fun to watch, but at the same time, listen to yourself. If it's mm -hmm. really scary, I would say it's not worth doing it. Because, Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, The Last of Us 2 really freaked me out. And I said to Mark, like, oh, if I play it, I want you just next to me. Because that, for me, would be much more comfortable. Um, but I feel like a lot of people just don't understand that these things can really terrify someone. Yes, like... like yeah. I was in a way traumatized by this movie, right? So yeah. obviously oh, now I'm over the trauma, but like it traumatized me and it affected me for months, literally months till I kind of got, got over the fear and yeah. forgot about it again. And I think that's also why it's so important that there is age restrictions on movies and games. True. Yeah, because true. I was I was still a teenager, and as I said, like at that point, I wasn't really sure yeah. in what I believed and You're what I didn't believe. You're figuring things out yeah. at that age. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, so, I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think I if think, I was yeah. older, I could have maybe made the decision during the movie. Okay, I do not want to watch this. I gotta yeah. go now. Um, or maybe I would have somehow somewhat known before. But yeah. yeah. No, that's the thing, you know, I think definitely when you're younger and maybe you're with friends, but even as an uh, adult, you know, I feel like definitely we get put into these situations sometimes mm -hmm. and you feel silly, you're like, oh my god, why am I so scared? Like, come on, grow up, but I don't think it is about growing mm -hmm. up, you know, some things just really do stay with you and yeah, you just, you have to be careful, even if you're younger, but mm -hmm. also if at our age, you know, find that, as I said, find that comfortable zone or maybe mm -hmm. step outside the zone a little bit but in in a environment where you can just step out again if mm -hmm. you need to yes exactly and i also think like there's so many different things that scare different people yeah so as i said like alien is a movie that i absolutely love i think yeah. it's thrilling it's, it's exhilarating it's a little bit scary but for me it doesn't scare me as a person it just scares mm. me within the movie but for someone else that might be completely different maybe you can handle alien for example mm -hmm. and i think it's really important to kind of figure out what triggers your own fears exactly and yeah work with that or work around that and i'm absolutely not a person that thinks that you have to face your fear so if someone's no. scared of of uh, spiders for example i don't believe that they need to stop being scared of spiders like that's okay you can live with a uh with a spider phobia yeah and if then it's... you don't have to get over it and you don't have to play games with spiders in them yeah. if that freaks you out <laughs> yeah absolutely i agree yeah the, it's all about feeling comfortable at the mm -hmm. end of the day and safe mm -hmm. you know that's the, yes. the main the main things but yeah, should we move on to something a bit more, uh, maybe lighthearted? <laughs> yes, I'm <laughs> getting a bit yeah. tense up now. I can like, feel like my like, Oh my god, is someone bit. watching me? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, behind me. Let's <laughs> <laughs> move on to something a bit more uh, lighthearted. So actually, I wanted to ask you, um, because you did tell me, I think a couple of weeks ago, but I don't know if you sort of still play that game, but you said you got the... Ori and the Will of Wisps, I think it's called, right? That uh, game? No, it's the, the first one. Ori and the... the something, forest? something. Ori and the... Ori and the Blind Forest. Oh, and the Blind Forest. So that's like part one, like the, the first yes, game. Exactly, the yes, exactly, yes. Right, okay. Have you played that yet? Because I... I did see that game on on um, on sale and I was, you know, thinking of buying it, but you told me last time that it was quite hard or something to... Uh... Yes, and I haven't finished it yet. I haven't played in a while. Okay, okay. I think it got, like, too hard and now I just leave it and I'll come back to it another yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, okay. But yeah, I, yeah. Was, I was thinking of that. I heard a lot of good, good reviews about mm -hmm. um, th those it's... two games gorgeous yeah. it's absolutely beautiful the music the art it's stunning the story is touching um yeah it's a it's an amazing game okay and it's sort of like puzzle then or like what how do you have yes to, um yeah. i think it's kind of counts as a platformer 
jump and run kind of thing. I'm not very good with these genres of games mm -hmm. and what like what their definitions are. But yes, there's puzzles in there. It's jump and run. There's a little bit of combat. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's it's beautiful and it's kind of two D. So you're you're not in a three D world. You're like in a two D world. Oh, but 2D it's drawn. World, yeah. It's drawn three D. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That sounds really cool. I might have to, uh, yeah, have a look at that one. Mm. I would love to play that. I mean, there's an, a similar kind of game uh, that I played. It's called Child of, Child of Light. I actually have oh, the yeah. art book here. It's one of the first games I got for the PS4. And I think it's more targeted towards kids. Sorry, it has this kind of storybook kind of vibe. But it's also jump and run with some puzzles. The combat is completely different. The combat is turn-based combat, which makes it really interesting. But I think if someone is into Ori and the Blind Forest, they would love this game as well. Okay. And what I really like about it is that all the dialogue is in rhymes. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yeah. Yes. And the art style is also absolutely stunning. Absolutely yeah. stunning. Yeah. I think for those games, I just find it so amazing how, you know, obviously, if it's a little bit more like platform 2D, you don't have, you don't rely so much on the visuals in like a 3D world, but it is so much more about sort of the environments that you're in right the art style mm -hmm. and then along with the music as well they make it work so well yeah and it's I mean, still they're... you still feel like you're in there right you still you know can relate to that place they're definitely huge works of art yeah. they're they're beautiful Absolutely i think so stunning. i think you know like i i definitely think it's Probably, I don't know if I don't know. Obviously, you know when you're producing these games, how difficult mm. it is. But those compared to 3D games, I think it's still so much work, right? Like it's not sort of less work if you if you make that sort of game. I would say. I just... wouldn't actually know. I think the work is just yeah. different. It's I, different. I suppose. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's not mm -hmm. sort of less. I guess. I mean, um, I guess you could do it with less manpower because you don't yeah. have to place everything within the world. True. And don't have to like texture every stone yeah. and everything. So I could imagine that it's less Unless, manpower work. Yeah. But um, I think like games in these styles are usually done by smaller studios, I suppose. Yeah. So they have less people from the beginning and um, and just make these kind of games. But yeah, they're definitely, I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, I just think so they're beautiful. just as good. Yeah. Mm. I also, um, well, I was telling you about this, and I haven't finished the game yet, but I started playing uh, a game called Spirit Spiritfarer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when I first, the, the thing that drew me to the game, first of all, was just the premise of it. So you're, you're basically helping uh, souls, or, or spirits, they call them in the game, spirits. You're helping them uh, pass on to, like, the afterlife. So it's sort of that in-between stage, right, of, you know, basically having died and then passing on um so it's it's a very yeah it's a very unique concept like no game has pro i mean maybe somewhere a game has done this but i i've never heard of a game that was set in this sort of you know world let's say um so there's still a lot of realism to it because everyone that you help in the game Obviously, I'm not going to, you know, talk about the stories. I don't want to spoil mm -hmm. it. But everyone you help in the game, every spirit that comes on board and you have to sort of look after um, has their own story. And it's it's a little bit like, um, I can't even, like the game has so many different aspects to it. It's crazy because on one hand, you are um, managing this ship, basically, right? Everything's happening on this like boat or ship. Uh, so there's a lot of management to it and you have to, you know, gather resources, you have to cook food. So it's a little bit more like Animal Crossing as well because all the villagers have uh, these things that they give you or they want like specific foods and specific items. So, you know, every sort of spirit is like a different, you know, personality, of course. And 
the other aspect of it is that you know you're just exploring this world also for your own character you're meeting these other people like the npcs around the world that are not on your ship but could still have maybe challenges for you so there's this like world exploration to it Mm -hmm. um but also yeah the the biggest part of the game at the end of the day is that you are learning about the spirits on board but also through them you're learning about yourself the character that you play who's called Stella you're learning something about herself as well um and that's just amazing because again it just happens you know through the game it's a very gradual Mm -hmm. progression and sometimes it's like such a big contrast because like sometimes I'm you know, looking after my garden, I'm gardening my plants, I'm looking after my sheep and collecting my eggs and doing like the far- farming sort of mm-hmm. like simulator. And then I talk to one of the spirits and they like, you know, talk about the war or they talk about their battle with cancer or they talk about, you know, their their daughter and the last memories. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, like yeah. I didn't, I was not ready for this. Like, I'm sort of tearing up now as I speak because... Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I need to... Oh, no! <laughs> oh, girl. Oh. Uh... Sorry, give You're me okay. a no. <laughs> Wait, I'll take over for a bit. <laughs> no, um, I find it really, really fascinating how, how these games can touch someone. And um, actually, I'll I'll quickly change the subject a little bit. Remember when we watched a movie on Netflix, um, the Moon movie? Oh Do you remember? Oh my god! Yes. What, what was, was it called? Yeah, what was it called? That's so bad. Uh, Over the Moon or something? Um, let me just check. Yes, you're right. Over the Moon. Over the Moon. Oh damn! Okay, so. I, I usually I'm a person I, I avoid emotional movies I mostly watch comedies maybe action movies nowadays because I get very very much into movies emotionally so I I put myself into them so much and I feel like if if it's too emotional it will drag me down a lot um, so I kind of avoid them but we watched that movie and it so got to me like it touched me so hard and I remember we cried a lot both of us and (laughs) we did yeah it was very sad of course Mm. obviously like I felt these things and I was really really sad at the same time it's so it's so freeing as well because especially I noticed it with myself but I'm sure a lot of people can relate like during this corona period I try to keep myself together so much that sometimes I don't let myself feel things. Yeah. So when you watch a movie or play a game that lets you feel these things, I think it's really, really freeing and therapeutic in some way. I still avoid it because I'm scared of it. Who would have thought? I'm scared of emotions. (laughs) Yeah. No, I get what you mean. But yes. You have to prepare yourself. You're like, oh my God, I'm going to feel things, right? Playing this game Mm -hmm. or watching this movie. You do have to be prepared. The thing is though, with Spirit Fair, like I'm surprised I got so emotional because when I played the game, it didn't hit me as much. And I think the reason is that in the game, you are prepared to say bye to these people. It's not not a shock at Mm -hmm. all. Like the game Mm -hmm. prepares you. It's not you know, really sad or over the top at all. But I think the stories that the characters, and this is, again, just the writing is so good because the stories of the characters stay with you after. And now that's when I thought about it and I was like, oh my God, that's, you know, that was so emotional when the character said bye and, you know, etc., etc. And the thing is, I think the nice thing is as well, you can relate to different characters or different spirits that come on board. So some of the spirits, like, of course I was close to, but, you know, they say goodbye and it's like, you know, sad, of course, but you don't feel as emotionally connected. But with others, definitely you feel that because maybe that story hits close to home or, you know, there, there's some mm-hmm. sort of um, relatability with that spirit. So mm-hmm. then, of course, when they do say goodbye you feel really empty and you know you're like oh but you still have to carry on you know because there's other people you have to help like it's uh it's it's just honestly i cannot recommend it enough and Mm -hmm. 
The game itself seems a little bit slow at first, but trust me, afterwards you've got so many things to do to keep busy in the game, and um, mm -hmm. it's got a really good pace to it. Like, you can go at your own pace, but things do pick up later, so... Anyway, I can't like I can't recommend it enough. Um, it's it's just amazing. Mm. It really is. I think yeah, it's just that really really good storytelling. Yeah. Um, I uh, the thing that comes to mind for me with these emotional games is is Mass Effect, of course. <laughs> but like again, <laughs> like see I. That going, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just the one game I really had that like by the end of Mass Effect three or. By Mass Effect 3, I was so em emotionally invested yeah. in my friends in the game, in the story, that the things that happen in there, they hit so hard. And it's a really good story. Like, there's not really any deaths or anything that happened that feels useless or that doesn't yeah. feel like it wasn't worth it. Like, there's always a point for it. Like, people self-sacrifice, people um make mistakes that kind of thing but it yeah. doesn't feel unnecessary if that makes sense but it still it hits you so hard and again that's what i love about video games you ha i mean i have that with books and movies too um there's plenty of books that make me cry um but with video games you have that you're so emotionally invested like you really get attached yeah. to these things and these stories affect you in a much much different way much much different does that make sense <laughs> very <Yeah>. different way <laughs> we'll go with it we'll go with it yes yeah. in a very different way and yeah, they just absolutely. i don't know they hit i think they hit a part in your heart that you don't give get access to a lot yeah so true mm. so true and i think going back to that point of you know good writing um making sure that the characters have faults that they've made mistakes and again in the game you find out about these faults and sometimes like you switch your opinion so much like that's that's what i went through as well with some characters like i was like oh my god why would they do that mm -hmm. and then later you find out the story and you're like oh my god now i get it like you go through this whole journey you know and mm -hmm. that that is amazing if a game can get you to really question yourself like you know your own morals or like yes. judgments that you make it's mm -hmm. just amazing like and i think that's the the interesting thing especially with this game which is like again 2d like it's you know it looks really cute right when you see it like oh you're like oh what a cute little game but it's so well written and even sometimes quite like blunt and you know there's <laughs> some really funny moments in there but it is sort of very serious sometimes as well and obviously it's made for adults it's not a kid game at all mm -hmm. um so it i love that contrast i just love how they did the contrast a really like cute aesthetic pleasing game but at the same time there's so much depth to it mm -hmm. so it's yeah. just awesome i think for myself what i'm taking out of it is that i should probably you try and play to, yeah play to. more emotional games and maybe also watch more emotional series yeah i don't think there's anything wrong with that i think like you said it's i don't know maybe we're just scared to to yeah like just scared to feel yeah. things i don't know i mean Again, like, I'm not sure how it is for different people, but for me, I definitely notice because I have a history with depression and anxiety. And during the whole corona phase, I was really scared that this would bubble up again. And it did to some extent as well. But I tried so hard keeping it together that I really like come to the point that I don't let myself feel things yeah. so basically I'm a crier I cry very easily but over the last year I haven't actually cried that often which is weird because you right? would think yes <laughs> you know I'm gonna cry a bit more now <laughs> <laughs> right the world is basically ending <laughs> but I, I just don't let myself get there I that's think. true and, it's, yeah. I mean, it's self-preservation in a way, and I it don't is. think it's necessarily wrong. But at no. the same time, I think it would be a bit healthier if I like let myself be, feel let things. Let yourself feel things, yeah. yeah. But that's why Mass Effect Legendary Edition is coming out. Which that, that's why yes. <laughs> they made it for the new. Yeah, like, they girl. Made, made it for you and me. <laughs> they made it for me. <laughs> I'm getting it now. Um, no, that's definitely the one thing because I am a yeah. bit worried because I want to stream the game and I know what happens. Yeah. But 
oh oh my god i'm just thinking about it now and oh there's oh i like i can't that will wait come. to see you stream it because i have mm. i've i haven't seen anything of the game so i will go into it blind um but i'm excited because i know how much it means to you mm. you know and i just want to see the game you've like yes. obviously praised it so much so i want to you know get to know the characters and get to know the story mm. Like you will have to stream it, please. I will. I will definitely. <laughs> I want that's, to see it. That's my my big big thing for this year. Yeah. I I got basically everything ready. I got the capture card. Yeah. I got everything, so I I'm ready to stream. And oh, that's um, amazing. Yeah, I I'm gonna do it. I know I'm gonna do it. I think 14th of May will come out. Oh, that's, that's literally a month. month exactly. Yeah, we're filming. Well, we're filming. We're recording this on the fourteenth of April. So. Yes, so I think it's the fourteenth of May. Oh, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for you. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I think the other sort of um thing that we wanted to like touch on, and I think we've talked a little bit about this already, but just. Mm-hmm. You know, going back to these times where it is a bit more difficult, obviously, for everyone, but also just difficult to keep in contact with everyone. And I don't, this is so weird, but I find that during these times, like, I thought, you know, when we, we were going into Corona, I was like, oh, it's going to be so nice because now I can finally spend time with a lot of people, you know, we can, mm-hmm. like, Skype and play games. and But somehow, I just find it difficult. Like, I feel in some ways it's easier but then in others like it's even harder to get in contact with everyone uh, and maybe that's just you know me stopping myself uh, or maybe being anxious about these things but but I think definitely the positive that's come out is I have tried and I think everyone's tried to like play more multiplayer games right with their friends and for me the the best thing that's come out of this is that not only have I met new people during corona probably like lifelong friends I would say but also that we've got like you know for example like Denise you and I have like a friend group like online right Mm -hmm. like the usual people we play with but through D&D and through like other games we've sort of merged you know friendship groups uh different friendship groups together and I don't everyone just comes together and we like play these games and Mm -hmm. it's sort of again it's that sort of social aspect that we're missing right now it's just amazing Mm -hmm. and i also think for me um i've had a lot of trouble keeping in touch with real life friend during this time because obviously i'm like very very anxious and for me meeting real life friends always has the aspect of corona with it so i'm also always really really careful with that i don't want to meet too many people but i'm so glad that i have this online friend group this online community that i'm part of and that gives me so much during this time because I I cannot go outside. There's very few people that I actually meet and um, this online gaming gave me so, so much. So I'm so glad I have it. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. It's At the moment, I'm also just, you know, I don't think I've seen, apart from going to work, uh, but even then, you know, of course, we take the precautions necessary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just don't see a lot of people anymore. So. No. Indeed, it's such a nice sort of escape, but also you've got just, you know, you're communicating with people, like you're having a good time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, we've been enjoying so many games, but I feel like we need to um, get back into like Minecraft Valheim, right? We've still got those. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And we've been enjoying like we streamed the other day, um, even like simple games. I I can definitely recommend Golf It to everyone. It's so fun. um because it's such a simple game it's it was you know like such a a spontaneous buy like purchase Mm -hmm. of the game but it's just so fun again like getting a group of everyone to do a simple little game you know that was entertaining to watch entertaining to watch as well Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) I had oh, a lot I, of fun watching this. Yeah. yeah, I love how some uh, some guys were like raging at it. Yeah, it was so <laughs> much fun. No, honestly, but yeah, I think just definitely like being part of a community, even if it's not gaming. Mm-hmm. You know, just finding something that you're into at the moment, right? And I think everyone's in the same boat, so it's not like you're gonna be the only weird one, like without mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> you know, without any friends at the moment. I don't think yeah. so. I think everyone's going through that mm-hmm. same same situation so yeah 
I also think it's like really, really important to kind of stick to the people that make you feel comfortable. For sure. Even like in real life, um, I now figured out for myself that going outside makes me really, really anxious. But obviously I, I live with three other people who both, all three of them have lots and lots of real life friends. And mm. so sometimes we had people coming over. Obviously we didn't have any big parties, but... We had like someone, like a friend couple coming over for dinner um, and these kind of things. And they felt really, really comfortable for me because I was still within my own home. Yeah. And I know it was still a really, really small, small circle because obviously they're all part of the social circle of my flat. So it's not like a huge amount of people, but just having people over from time to time in a really safe way just gave me so much and for me personally I like that they were my own friends but my flatmates friends so if I got too much of socializing I'd just be like bye bye I'll be yeah. in my room <laughs> exactly yeah mm -hmm. that's so true but yeah. I wish do you know what I feel like we're getting so like just as a society in general I feel like we're getting so much better now with like um you know accepting different like mental illnesses let's say right mm -hmm. or anxiety and depression and all those things but I really wish at some point it was just okay to say to people like I've I've reached my limit of socializing mm -hmm. like I've reached yeah. that limit and like I, I wish I could say that and not feel like I'm blaming the other person because it's really not about that like you know even if it's just us and I could spend like you know forever with you mm -hmm. obviously but <laughs> there comes a point where you and yourself are like okay I've reached that socializing limit now and I need to recharge my batteries you know because yes, I feel exactly. like I, I don't even think it's sometimes to do with anxiety like it can just literally be your personality or you know just how you're feeling inside that day maybe you've just gone through like the worst i don't know customer complaint at work and you're like my mm -hmm. battery is gone you know after yes. all of that right i think it's a, it's an introvert thing right so what i once yeah, learned about be. introverts and extroverts is that extroverts regain energy when they're with other people yeah and introverts regain energy when they're alone alone yeah so but, for me it's definitely like that like socializing yeah. costs me a lot of energy there's very very few exceptions with that like for example with my boyfriend that doesn't cost me energy and on contrary uh on the contrary it, it, i i can regain energy yeah um with you it can be both mostly yeah. i regain on energy but sometimes in some cases yeah. um i think it also costs energy true yeah. but like it's really that thing so I think for us and you're you're like that as well I know that yeah. <laughs> that yeah. socializing costs us a lot of energy and it's yeah. not always the same amount so sometimes you can handle things that on other days you can't yeah but yeah but I think, I think that that's is, the thing it's also what I you know I definitely agree with the introvert extra but also there's a scale and I feel like on some days I'm sort of in the middle almost where mm -hmm. indeed I can regain energy i'm having so much fun and i'm like yes i'm gonna stream today i'm gonna record my videos like yes you know i'm gonna do mm -hmm. it and that also changes for me and i feel like it does mm -hmm. for a lot of people um yes. because even with mark like my partner mm -hmm. um some days i'm like i can't talk to you i can't talk to anyone like it doesn't matter who you are to me i will mm -hmm. not be able to just you know be there for you today fully a hundred percent because i'm not in that headspace mm -hmm. um so I, I, I think for me, it really depends. And definitely like with us, let's say if we're going through something really difficult and you're listening to your friend and supporting them, that mm -hmm. would drain you more than if we're just having, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like a silly little gaming session. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. It depends on the situation. It depends on how you're feeling that day. And I think definitely, I just want to get to that point, like I said, you know, where us as a society, we're like, okay, intro if you're introverted or even if you're in that headspace, you can just say like, yeah, you know, my battery's gone today. I need yep. to reach out. I gotta now. go. <laughs> yeah, and Be you right won't back. take that personally, you know, because mm -hmm. you you get that that just happens. So, yeah, hopefully we get to that stage. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the good and the bad thing about Corona. I mean, it's really tragic because I read in different in different places that a lot of people are struggling mentally. Yeah um i also heard that for example the children's hospital here in switzerland is full apparently because it hits oh, a lot goodness. of children that much mentally just yeah. like mentally uh children and uh, teenagers especially 
and that's that's horrible of course yeah. that that's tragic uh, but at the same time i hope that it'll make us learn how many people are struggling mentally because that's i think true. that's that's sometimes something we don't know so when i first went through the depression i i I know I wasn't alone, but I thought I was alone yeah, among the people like around me. Yeah. But now, recently, um, one of my upstairs neighbor re- came came here to have a drink um, with me and my flatmate, and I don't know her very well. Like it's the second time I met I met her, but we just started talking about depression and what we go through and how it affects us during the cur- during corona and it's just like you know this one random person yeah. again that just yeah. f- went through the same things as i and i think that's that gives so much i think it's really really important to talk about it more openly obviously not everyone feels comfortable no. talking about their illnesses but i think if you feel comfortable it can give a lot to people if you're open about it exactly and say other people hey i went through this and then the other person can say oh shit i went through that as well yeah exactly and then you can have definitely a great conversation about your own experiences Mm -hmm. and you know how you dealt with some aspects or getting even getting help as well you know some people have been on meds some people have seen therapists and everyone's very like you know yeah everyone's got their own way of dealing with those mm-hmm. things so even sharing your experiences can help and what you've been through uh with yes getting definitely help. yeah mm-hmm. so just yeah I, I definitely i agree definitely being more open about it can help yes if you're ready for that just yes i know as long as you're I, comfortable. I have one friend who also struggled mentally for a while a lot and I know from from that friend that they don't feel comfortable yeah. talking about with other people in depth and I mean that's absolutely valid. Like, absolutely. I think you need to know your own your own uh, limits. And for me, it helps a lot because um, I also know that when I was depressed and I started reading about other people's experiences online, that helped so much, yeah. like indefinitely much. That that's crazy because you feel so alone in this. Like, and some people can't understand. There's some people who just have never been depressed like that i mean they might have been sad but they've never been in depression yeah and i don't think if you've never been through that you can actually in any way understand what it's like yeah no i agree i don't think you'll ever understand but like again i'll I'll, I'll use my partner as an example Mm -hmm. because he's amazing with that and I, I was always under the impression that, you know, with friends or partner, it doesn't matter. Like, anyone close in your life, if they haven't gone through the same thing you've gone through, they will never understand you. I just don't think that's true anymore. Like, if you've okay. got someone who can actually listen and actually listen, right? Not like the, you know, oh, yeah, sure. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, I get that. But actually listen to you and not, well, first of all, obviously not have judgments towards you, but also just listen and you know, they don't have to relate to it, right? But just to understand, like, okay, this is what that person must be feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why they are feeling this way, maybe. But as long as they understand that's what you're going through right now and they can give you that support that's needed, so important. And it works. So Mm -hmm. now, you know, if I'm feeling down and I tell uh, my partner, he knows what to do. And trust me, it took ages to get to that point because the conversation is not easy like oh you know what should i do when you're depressed like i don't know you know what i don't even know what to do when i'm feeling like that yeah, so exactly it's True. really hard um and again this is you know also for people you're living with or your friends and even with you sometimes like you know i have to say like oh i'm really down and sometimes i can't even reply and i feel terrible mm-hmm. because you know you want those people near you but at the mm-hmm. same time you're pushing everyone away Mm-hmm. So it's it it's definitely a really hard conversation to go through, but I, I feel like it's worth it. Like just having mm-hmm. someone you can trust, even if they haven't gone through that, if you trust that person and you know they will listen to you, uh, share it with them because that will definitely do you wonders. Um, and I also just, I will say, if you're in a home situation where you're, you know, 
whoever you're living with doesn't understand what you're going through do not blame yourself because I went through Mm -hmm. that and it was horrible because you know especially let's say with the older generation right for them it's like you cannot be depressed you cannot be anxious because that's like a sign of weakness and Mm -hmm. you know our life is too good we have nothing to complain Mm -hmm. about um but that's not true like everyone has their struggles you know we cannot sort of compare them it's not yeah someone else is having a harder time than me you are still allowed to feel down right it's not like a competition yes no it is not (laughs) and your feelings are valid exactly if you're going through that and the thing is i think the harder thing is especially for me um is like by now i know what's happening with me and Mm -hmm. i know it's it's depression but it still gets it's still really really hard to not blame myself for it so if I have a day that I'm not productive at all I will I still blame myself and I try not to and in some ways it does work but it's just I think it's really really hard to understand why why your brain doesn't work in that moment why your brain isn't doing what it's supposed to do uh, why you don't have the energy and I mean, it's really, really difficult. It's but, so difficult. Mm, what but I also think yeah. can help is if you're living with someone that doesn't know how to handle it. I think it's the best or a good thing to talk with them about it when you're not feeling your worst. So when you have a better day, maybe yeah. then have the conversation. Because obviously, um, if you're already having yeah. a bad day, you might mostly don't have the energy no. um, the, or, or the it will come to... across wrong. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So no, as as one of my aunts once told me, it's basically the same. She once told me, you're not supposed to tell someone that they're bad at sex during sex. You have to tell them after. <laughs> And it's true, that right? So much, yes. <laughs> that doesn't apply just oh to sex. Goodness. I think That's you like can't everything. really. Yeah. Yes, like you have to have these conversations yeah. in a in a good time. Yeah, in a good environment at a good time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love that. That's great. That's gonna stick with me. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I know, like. It's like this story from last time with with yeah. the man who cried wolf. It's like these. This is one of the things that stuck with that me. That just stuck with you, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, and I think you know the other thing as well. This is the last thing I'll say about it. But the other thing that is sometimes nice to remember, and that can stop you blaming yourself just a little bit, is knowing sometimes that it's things like depression can just be passed down right these are things that can just be in our brain the way that we are wired Mm -hmm. and i know that sounds like oh my god well i don't have a choice then but there's always two sides to it it's not just oh i've been through a really shit time and now this is you know coming back to basically bite me in the uh in the um i was gonna say in the arse like really in the arse (laughs) But in, yeah, I don't know why. I just I was like in the arts, like okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think there's always like those two sides, and sometimes, you know, that's again was really difficult. Some people are like why, like you know, when you said I wake up, I have a bad day. I'm like, why is this happening? Like, what has happened? What have I done to make myself feel like this? And sometimes it's not even you. Like it's literally your brain just that mm-hmm. day being like yeah that's what's gonna happen nope. today we're not doing anything we're not today. doing it we're not doing it and sometimes of course it can be triggers coming back you know mm-hmm. corona being a, tr- a big trigger for some people but um yeah sometimes definitely it's you, you can't blame yourself that's literally that's that's the mm-hmm. message isn't it <laughs> you don't, don't blame yourself for it just no no you know, try to find ways to help yourself and um, share it with people you trust and they can also support you in there. Mm, definitely. There we go. <laughs> that was a very emotional Oh my episode. goodness, I feel like, I feel sort of like relieved. I feel like, woo, you know, like a weight's come off me. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's good though. Yeah, this was like a really intense um, mm-hmm. episode, but... I think I'm happy we talked about these things. I think so many yes. people are going through it. So I hope for everyone listening that it's somehow, you know, helped you or just made you think about maybe people in your own life that are going mm-hmm. through these things. And 
um, what you can do. Of course, we're not professionals, you know, but no, no, we're just <laughs> sharing. Yeah, don't like if you're quote really us. bad. Yeah, and if you have any possibility goes to see a professional even if you're not that bad like therapy is not just for mentally ill people therapy can help anyone literally anyone and we've all got our issues and yeah of course so i mean maybe therapy would have helped me being less scared of that one movie i once watched so i didn't have to have trouble falling asleep for months you know (laughs) that could have helped that no i'm joking but like seriously (laughs) absolutely um, i think it's important to talk to professionals if you're if you're struggling and you have someone you trust ask them so for example uh, when i was really bad i couldn't have found or brought myself to go to therapy alone i had to have my parents help me with that yeah. and so if you're struggling um try and find someone you trust and just tell them please i need your help with this exactly yeah it's and so important don't just like if you have a better day just think oh, okay now i don't need it anymore <laughs> so over. i think the yeah. better <laughs> days are actually the one the one the days that you can actually go to people and say hey i'm really bad i'm okay today but usually i'm really bad so if i go bad again please please help me do this and this and this yeah so important mm-hmm Oh, amazing. Let's leave it at that. Yeah. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) Let's leave it at that. Um, If if you're feeling bad, get help. It's absolutely okay. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. No, that's true. And I hear that so often. But honestly, having been through that, it's it's true. Mm -hmm. It will help Mm -hmm. in the end. You know, it's just, I think always it's the first step that's the hardest. And after you've made that step, it just gets easier Mm -hmm. every time. So, yeah. Anyway, we're sending you our love um, to everyone listening. You know, it's a hard time for everyone. Just stay, Mm -hmm. yeah, stay social, stay strong in your own way and we'll get through it. Play Um, emotional games. Play emotional games. Have a cry. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Watch watch a Disney movie. You might cry that as well, you know. Yes. (laughs) So, yeah, everyone, take care. Thank you so much for listening again. Bye-bye. We'll be back soon. (laughs) Bye-bye.